What is up, guys? Welcome back to Kyle's Big Board presented by the Straight Facts Podcast, a series where we take a topic, we rank it, and we count it down. I'm joined today by my man, James Jackson. I'm going to rank. He's going to react. James, we ready? Are we ready, man? We got through the NFC with a breeze. <laughs> you, you you didn't say any two thing or two things too much out of bounds, so I didn't have to get at you too much. But the AFC, a whole different beast, man. So let's go. Let's get it cracking. That's facts. As James just said, we're doing this for every division. We already knocked out the NFC ones. Those are up on the channel now. Go check mm-hmm. them out. And we got more to come. This is just the first AFC video. So this will be our NFL preview episode five. And we're going to kick it off with the AFC South. Question of the day is, Who's winning the AFC South? Let us know in the comment section down below. And James, who's winning the AFC South? It's funny because I just watched the Buccaneers scrimmage the Texans, and I don't want to speak too much on the on the Deshaun Watson situation, but because he's not there right now, I almost forgot the Texans were a team. And then mm-hmm. watching them last night, I forgot. I remembered why I forgot they were a team. But I think a lot is riding on on new pieces in the NFC South. Obviously, Trevor Lawrence is there with Jacksonville. Carson Wentz is there with Indianapolis. But I am going to go with the Colts. And it's going to be off the strength of if Carson can stay healthy. It looks like he's on track to play week one. But I think that defense is really going to carry them all the way to, to an AFC South championship. And to be completely honest, they don't have too much to worry about. They, they just don't got to lose it. So I'm going the Colts way. All right. Well, you did mention a team that I got at number four. That is the Houston Texas. They're going to kick off our list. Arguably the worst organization in football the last five years. The Houston Texans finished four and 12 last season. And to be honest, I think they're on track to do it again. Their defense has gotten worse. Deshaun Watson, you mentioned his future is uncertain. And I just can't see a scenario where this team gets more than five or six wins. Um, If by some way Deshaun Watson plays the whole season, I'd have the Texans at three in this division. But Mm -hmm. I'm going to have them at four. That, that's literally like the, the best case scenario is that they go to three. And that's yeah. just like you said, if D-Watt plays 17 games, which right now it just doesn't look like he's going to. But you you undersold that, man. Like like the worst organization in the NFL <laughs> is being nice to the Texans. Let's not forget yeah. this is the same team. I get it was one man, but this is the same team that traded the, uh, DeAndre Hopkins for, you know, a bag of Skittles and some laundry. So, yeah. like the Texans have just been down bad. It looked good for a little bit, yo. There was like – that that 2018 to 2019, yep. 2020 stretch looked all right. And then now it's it's back to just plummeting to the center of the earth. The Texans are so irrelevant right now. Yeah, I agree. Well, we'll move to number three. That is the Jacksonville Jaguars for me. There's going to be a lot of eyes on this team, obviously. New coach, new QB. Personally, I'm big on Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I think he's going to have a great year in terms of rookie production. Maybe one of the better rookie quarterback years we've seen in a while. Um, they're not going to be a playoff team, but if their defense can get in shape, I can see this team going 500, which is a huge step up for Jacksonville. Um, I like James Robinson, DJ Shark, LaVisca Chenault. I think they'll all have solid seasons. So if their defense isn't the, you know, second worst in the league again, like they were last year, I think the Jags will break their three season streak of being the worst team in the AFC South. But they're only going to be the third best one. Mm. <laughs> Yo, I like the optimistic spin you got on it. I think the Jaguars are third by default just because the Texans have to be fourth. Like, mm. they just traded away Gardner Minshew. Y'all got Gardner Minshew on the Eagles now. But what yeah. I watched in the preseason, I didn't watch Trevor Lawrence really win the starting job. I just watched Gardner Minshew lose the starting job. And yeah. for all intents and purposes, I don't think there was ever a way that Trevor Lawrence wasn't the starting quarterback. Like the Texans yeah, or the Jaguars, they didn't have anything yeah. going for him. So give your number one overall pick the starting quarterback. But it don't look like Trevor is all set and ready to go. It don't look like Urban is all set and ready to go and making this NFL transition yet. Like mm-hmm. I think the Jags are up for a little bit down bad too. They're just not as you know, tragic as the Texans are. So they got to land yeah. at three. I don't think so. You said optimistic spin. I, I legitimately think they could win seven or eight games, which would be a huge step up. <sighs> Yo, if they, if they win seven or eight games, y'all all got to tune into every big board going forward because <laughs> Kyle got some magic voodoo. If they win seven or eight, man, I don't see. All it. right. Well, we will move to the top two, obviously mm. the top two Colts and Titans. James said he took the Colts to win the division. I actually got the Colts at number two here. Um, these two teams are very close for me. I'm expecting a lot of the Jonathan Taylor this year, but I just don't think they nearly have the same offensive firepower that we see in Tennessee. I mean, mm-hmm. Carson Wentz is their quarterback. I know he was great you know, before, but what we saw last year is not promising. T.Y. Hilton is still their number one receiver. I don't think he's you know, one of the better one, number ones in the league anymore. And I'm not big on Michael Pittman, so I can't fully buy into this team. I mean, they should have no problem being the playoff team. Their defense is very, very good. So if their offense does perform and surprises me personally, because I'm kind of low on them outside of Jonathan Taylor, I think they'll be really dangerous. But personally, I think this is a 
10, 11 win team gets into the playoffs, but doesn't make too much noise in terms of the AFC. Yeah, obviously it was the, the Titans and the Colts one and two. Um, I just, I'm thinking that the better half happens for the, for the Colts this year. Like you, mm-hmm. you get Carson Wentz back with his buddy and Frank Reich. And that's who basically, I'm not going to say was the whole reason for an MVP or close to an MVP season for Carson Wentz, but it seems after the fact, you know, sure. post facto that Frank Reich might've been the biggest piece to that puzzle. And I do think their defense is, is above the, the Titans defense. And I really think, mm-hmm. especially Definitely with is. playing that division for six games, their defense can carry them to a division win. Maybe not like, you know, an AFC championship win or, or Super Bowl appearance, but it can yeah. carry them to an AFC South win. But I don't, I don't fault you for putting the Titans one at all. Yeah. I guess I just, I can't buy into that offense. Yeah. For the Colts. I mean, just T Y Hilton, Michael Pittman doesn't scare me at all. I know that they get tight end production a lot, so maybe they don't have to be great. But, I mean, outside of Jonathan Taylor, I don't see anyone that's really going to let up the stat sheet on that team. And when you put the names out there, it puts it into perspective a little bit. When yeah. you mention the fact that their weapons are still, you know, T.Y. Hilton, Michael Pittman, and Jonathan Taylor, it's like, eh, not the worst thing in the world, but it's the, yeah. it's not the names that we got on the other side either. So, like, yeah. you make a good point there. We will move on to the Titans, though. That is my number one team in the AFC South. I mean... So I'm not going to count the Sean Watson because I don't think he's going to play, but I think they have the best quarterback in the division, the Ugh. best running back in the division, and the best two wide receivers in the division. So, I mean, the offensive attack alone can win them five or six football games, even if the defense gives up like 30 points. Uh, I'm a huge Titans believer. I think they are the second best team in the AFC. Very bold take there. But mm-hmm. whether or not they do that, though, we will see. It's going to rely on can they find this defensive consistency. If that defense can be a top half of the league, you know, top 16 defense, then this team's going to go as far as they want to and be in a great position to contend in the postseason. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to move past the second best team in the AFC take right now. It's it's um, a tight one. Yeah, we, you, you, you might you might have to put that as as the, the title of this to, to draw some people in. But <laughs> now the, the quarterback take is what I agree with. And the reason why the Titans are going to go far is because Ryan Tannehill is one of the best players in the league and not trying to do too much. Like he's mm-hmm. not going, he's not going to win the Titans any games. We've seen that. He's also not going to lose the Titans any games. We've seen that. And I think they're going to have the NFL's leading rusher again, just on sure volume. They're going to give Derrick Henry the ball 30 times a game as yep. they should. He's a workhorse. So do that. Now you got Julio to kind of aid in the attack with AJ Brown. Um, So, I mean, the, the Titans got every piece, you know, is, is there to do it. And they've been, mm-hmm. Pretty much the same team going on year three or four now, and hopefully Julio is just a little bump they need to get over the hump. But in terms of the AFC South, I, I think they got a pretty good command on it. All right, worries. So that is it for our list. Uh, we'll go back: Texans four, Jags three, Colts two, Titans one. I see two playoff teams here. I think you agree with that, right? Mm, yeah, two playoff teams. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. As I said, this is only episode five of an eight-part season or series. Shout out, my man. James Jackson. I'm Kyle Sirik. I hope you guys are all getting buckets, staying safe, staying healthy. We'll see you guys next time.